Hey everyone, it's Sister Brack again, um, and today I'll be showing you how to paint realistic anime hair. Uh, last time I showed you how to do the skin, and that was part one. And uh, the point of this uh, sort of series is that I'm trying to show you how to implement the realism uh, with the anime aesthetics, so with the anime signifiers or characteristics. So we're not really changing the anime proportions, we're not changing what the lines are telling us, um, we are just bringing in some realistic elements. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to color the hair and show you the step by step just like I did with the skin on how to make the hair look realistic um, and match the realism of the face that we have now. Um, so basically the gist of it is going to keep the hair outlined so we're not going to bring in like extra little pieces of hair that look like the actual hair in real life. We're not trying to create that texture. We're trying to stay within the outlines already drawn by Wow Wow Wero. <laughs> um, so we're going to keep the hair outline the same. We're going to work with it. We don't want to remove from the anime feeling at all. We wa we're just uh, bringing in realistic elements and realistic characteristics of hair. So we're combining the two and creating like a hybrid of realism and anime. And the only way really to cre create a hybrid is to remove the lines but keep what the lines were telling us to do. So the lines are borders and the lines are telling us that you know within this uh, within this line and this line is a piece of hair so we're not going to break what those lines are telling us we are going to remove the lines and replace them with form because lines are just signifiers they're not the real thing as I explained in the video before which I recommend you watch um, so we're going to keep the lines we're just bringing in the form uh, so that we can work with some core shadows we can respond to the light source the same and we can really um, have fun with it and not lose what uh, what the anime feeling is and uh, as one of the comments said uh, anime is so kawaii um, and I agree anime is, is like a really has a big fan base for that factor it's that it's, it brings in a new kind of humanoid um, and uh, it's always fun to play around with but for me I like to challenge myself and realism is always a great thing to bring in so it's always fun uh, to, to try to merge both worlds realism and anime I think that's the best way to enjoy the both so first of all, um, so these lines have already been changed, uh, so the lines are not black. I always recommend if you're going to change the lines and get rid of them and paint over them, please get rid of the black and replace it with a brown or something close to the skin tone. Um, so I'm trying to decide what kind of hair I want to give her. I kind of feel like orange hair. I don't know who this character is. Um, I kind of want to give her pink hair, brown hair, blue hair. I'm not sure. Blue hair would match with her eyes a lot better, but pink is really cute. So I think I'm going to go with pink. <laughs> um, so let's find where this file is. Okay, so the lines are here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new layer on top of the skin tone. And first let me, and I'm going to get the basic brush, the really, you know, hard brush, um, which is this one. It's just a, one of the basic brushes on Photoshop. It does have pen pressure and transfer on it, which are always great. Uh, so don't forget to use those. But, um... I'm just going to work with it that way. So let me see what's happening here. Does this have grays in it? No? So I can just select inverse. Select inverse and then paint on the layer above. And that way I'm not painting on the face. So that I don't have to worry about cleaning up my lines too much. Alright, so let's choose some, some, some hair colors. Um, let me get out of that first. So some hair colors um, don't match with certain skin tones. So you have to make sure that you are thinking about the skin tones already there. You don't want to bring in like this really acidic pink and expect it to work. It might work in cell shading. In cell shading pretty much anything matches. But still, even in pixel art, even in that minimalist way of painting, you still have to match colors. You can't just choose any random color and expect it to work. It's not going to work like that. And I've made a lot of videos and in a lot of the critique hours I talk about um, why you have to think about the values and how you have to match the values as well as the hue as well as the saturation um, before you bring in any colors on top of any or, or colors you have already. You have to make sure they match in those fields. Why? Because the reason why we're seeing any of this stuff right now, the reason why we see a girl in a room 
um, this item is because of a light source. That light source controls how much of each color we see. That light source is the ruling governing power. So if that light source is the unifying force, it means that all of the colors are receiving the same amount of light. Some are getting a little bit more depending on closeness to the light source, but generally speaking, the light source that you're in governs the kind of tone you are, you're, you're, you're having all the colors and the grayscale tone. So you have to bring in colors that match in tone because what you're telling the audience and you're telling our eyes is that the light source is the same. And that's important. And if you're you know, having trouble accepting that the light source has to be the same, you have to start thinking about taking lessons in, in, in light sources. And I have those videos as well. It's always good to have one primary light source, a couple of secondary light sources or a tertiary light source. Um, but it's always good to have your primary light source control your colors, your value, the tone of the light source has to be brought in. So if there's yellows in the skin, there's going to be yellows in the hair because of the light source is yellow. Um, so all that stuff I've already talked about and I'm just brushing through it quickly before I start. This video I hope is going to be shorter than the one before because I know some of you think it's a bit long. Um, I know that uh, I, if I were to paint it without having, explain, having, having, having explained anything, um, it would have been a lot faster. But uh, the fact that I had to explain what I was doing was uh, slowing down the process. So I feel like that's better for you guys as well. You get more exposure for the process. I mean, it's not a time lapse. Uh, video entirely so that way um, you can you know really get the, the best of the video and the best of the lesson and that's what I try to do in my my channel I try to bring in some some uh, some extra something extra try <laughs> all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose some skin tones uh, first so I'm gonna drop to all the skin tones I'm gonna find the highlighter tone it's right here almost on no man's land so no man's land is right there it's a bit under that's good um, also, before I started this, I upped the contrast from where it was before. So if you compare where I am right now to the video at the end of the video uh, from before, um, it's a bit darker. I just upped the contrast with the use of the contrast tool. Um, it just it was a quick fix for me. I wanted to sort of have that, um, I don't know what happened, have that anime uh, sort of extra saturation that we see sometimes. All right, so my the dark tone here should be just about where my dark tone is for the hair. That's the rule of thumb. The darkest you go for the skin is, 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 is basically how dark you should go for the hair. So I want like a pink, like something of an acidic pink, a really, really cute pink. And I'm going to make my dark tone first. So you see it's really nicely matched with what we have here. It's a bit saturated, but that's what the anime thing is all about. Um, so let me... <clears throat> move it back up to the pink up here. This pink, this red up here has purples in it, of course, it's closer to blue. And this is warmer. So if you ever have to cool down a red in its purple tones, so if you don't know how to cool down an orange, you take it to red. Because red is closer to purple, so you have to go through each door. Just a little uh, reminder on how to sort of uh, work with colors and cool them down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to I don't like this tone. I'm going to push it up into the saturation. And I'm in no man's land right now. But this tone, I'm not going to use it everywhere. And some of the stuff that I'm going to be doing is going to be done by Dodge Tool. Dodge Tool is a great tool. Um, if you use it well, don't overuse it. And there is um, no lack of honor in using Photoshop tools. We are in the digital age, so if you're not using the best, or not taking advantage of what's available to you, then um, you're going to miss out on dodge tool awesomeness but um, but yeah I just uh, selected um, inverse so that I don't draw over the hair and you can see these colors match and I never had to match them to the skin I never had to bring them in and they're already matched so well and that's because this pink is really working because um, and I, I don't worry about being messy this pink is working because I used the skin tone the darker of the skin tone to determine where uh, it sat on the color wheel Okay, dokie. So look at this, these lines. What are they telling us? These lines are telling me that, hey, listen, I've already drawn where the hair is for you. Don't, oh, don't do more than what's already there. All you have to do is accessorize the hair. <clears throat> that way you can really just, um, I don't think this is going to, this is going to work. But let's see. All you've got to do is just bring in those realistic elements, like I said. Oops. So I'm just erasing away 
I use the, the lasso tool a lot to help me find edges a little bit better. So thank you again Wow Wow Wero for um, letting me use your image. It's a beautiful piece. It's really nice and, and, and um, you know, not too detailed, just the right amount. And I'm just cleaning up these edges because I don't want, I'm going to eventually lasso around these edges because I don't want to uh, lose this, this form right here, what we have here. We will be replacing some of these lines as well. Alright, so select, deselect, and just clean this up. <clears throat> so that's step one, lay down your base and work within your lines, color in the lines. This is all that stuff you learned in grade one in kindergarten is coming back. Color within the lines for now. <laughs> okay. So hopefully this doesn't take too long because I have the public session in two hours. <laughs> sure it won't take two hours, but if it does, I can pause it and get back to it. <clears throat> Sorry if you hear that humming sound, that's the laundry. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this, this video was um, from uh, suggested by one of the comments in the previous video, so if you guys do want me to do anything, please do suggest and comment and I will hear you. After all, this channel is for your education, so you know that's the whole point of it. You can help me out. I can't always know what you guys need, what you guys want to do, and I'm, I have fun with whatever questions you guys ask. I mean, sometimes I get bored of my own process and I want you guys to ask me questions because that way it gives me ideas for what to do. Um, if it's not, if it weren't for you guys giving me ideas, it'd be just, you know, the same old me thing. <laughs> that can be boring. Even I get bored of myself. Um, so yeah. Ask away. And ye shall be answered. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I'm just cleaning this bit up. So what's next? The step that's next is finding the light source. So it's the same light source we used for the face. And some of you think that the shadows for the face are different and they're going to look different and act different from the shadows on the hair. And the shadows on the hair look and act different from the shadows on the skin, I mean on the body. Um, that's not true. If we've got a core shadow running over the face, that core shadow is going to be shared. Shadows are shared on a, on a solid object. No matter how many accessories it's got on it, um, they're going to be shared with the, with the skin. I mean with, with everything, with the hair. So I'm still cleaning up a little. Oops. Some of the skin needs to be deleted because it's in the way. So some of the other videos that are coming up, um, a video about how to draw chests realistically for females, so the neck, collarbone, and cleavage combo, that whole area can be really difficult for portrait artists, and it's a really big thing for portrait artists um, to not just always be able to draw just a face, but to, to bring in other elements as well and accessorize them. And then soon after that, um, I'll probably do a um, fabric or um, drapery study. And um, I'll do it, you know, on the while recording the screen for you guys, so that you can see sort of how I go about it. I'll try to do it like real time without time lapse. We'll probably do it with time lapse. I'm not really sure. That one, that's just too ahead in the future. I'm not sure if I'll even do it. But again, if you guys have anything for me, just do ask. So this cleaning job will really go a long way. 
Um, if you do a nice, clean, crisp outline, like filling in your lines and um, cleaning up the edges well, it'll really help you later. So always try to clean up as much as possible. Just making sure the edge of the face is still soft. I don't want to damage anything I've already done. So I just get the blur tool and run it over the edge near the face of the hair. Alright, so let me get this palette out of the way. I usually shrink it. And let's just work with this one. So the, so the light source is coming in from this way and just like before I'm going to lay down some cell shading, some really, really basic shades. But I already laid down the the base tone, which is the darker version. It's going to work with the dark tone of the face. And I can only go lighter from here. If I want to go darker, I have to make sure that the dark tone isn't just this color. This cannot be the dark tone because this is a, a new color coming from a new point in the palette, which is like a purple, a darker purple. So what I want to do is choose a dark tone that moves along the saturation line. So this is the saturation curve. When you want to darken a color, you don't just go down to black. You curve with the color. So you will go be, you are going down, but you're going down on a curve, which means you're preserving saturation. Be careful if you do go down too much, you will change the color. So this has become a red, it is no longer a pink. So as we go down, we're going down on a curve and we're moving closer towards the purple ever so slowly and that way we get the perfect shadow color. So that's a big difference between this and this. Select. So this shadow color right here will work very, very well. Same thing with the highlighter. If you do want to highlight, you just go on a curve and get that highlighter tone as well. It's really close to the one we chose before, so it's not that much of a difference. Let me clean this up and get started. So I'm thinking about where is the light source and her head is a dome. So how would I shade a dome in that kind of situation? So at this point I'm actually just going to bring in my brush. And I've done a lot of hair tutorials and the main focus of those hair tutorials is one really big rule. You go uh, larger to smaller on the brush. So that's how it has to work. So right now the brush is really large and I'm trying to capture some core shadows. So where the shadows really happen on this hair. So where are the highlights? Where are the dark spots? <clears throat> Which areas are reached by the sunlight or the light source or whatever it is? And which areas aren't? So I'm shading around the bulges of the hair. Just like that. Nothing fancy. And remember, hair also casts shadows. So if I have cast shadows on the face, I'm going to have cast shadows everywhere else. So this piece of hair is casting a shadow on this piece of hair. So your lines are pretty much telling you what to do right now. So you see that? That's nice. When you have cast shadows, it's really nice. <laughs> it really just takes the form somewhere new. It takes it on a magic carpet ride. Okay, same thing over here casting some pretty shadows and over here I'm not going to blend it I'm going to have to cut it off I'm going to have to make it sort of a gradual a gradual change but looks also very very sudden as well because this area here is a core shadow so it bends away but I have to make sure it's like the perfect spot it's not going to be a flat it's not a flat piece of paper remember hair even if you're drawing it in anime style it's not a flat piece of paper it does have a high point, the bulge, the highest point on it. And so you have to work around that point. So I'm adding shadows on either side. So that I show that it's like a 3D object, a cylinder. 
and then there's this piece here casting a shadow on this piece. So I'm going to carry all of these highlights up and then cast a really, really sharp, nice shadow. Whoopsie. See that lasso is really amazing. I'm not sure that's how I want to cast the shadow actually. Um, I'll decide later. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get a highlight on this. And this definitely has a cast shadow. And this head piece, this piece here has definite shadows on it. So I'm just going to cast a shadow on that. I have to make sure these shadows sort of match. So let me do that again. When I want to cast this shadow, I'm going to enlarge sort of my brush and cast it like that, one big line, so they match each other. See, that's really nice, kind of matches with the cast shadow of the neck as well. And that's one consistent cast shadow. You want to you want to sort of get your cast shadows as parallel as possible all the time. Same thing over here. So I have my core shadow. I'm not going to interrupt it. These core shadows are still intact. I just need to finish this part, sorry. These shadows are still intact. They are just not going to be um, flat. It's not going to be actual cell shading. That's flat. It's going to move around the cylinder of the object. Yeah, just trying to eyeball it. And see, my eyes are always on the navigator. They never leave the navigator. The navigator has a nice overview, which is really, really helpful in determining whether or not these, these uh, shadows are working with the composition. So being the illustrator, you have control over how the shadows are changing the organization of the golden ratio and how, the, you know, the general organization of the whole image. So you have to make sure you're always looking over here and not deviating too far. So all this is really basic cell shading, working around what the lines are telling us form-wise. So lines are pointers. They are not the thing itself. So that means that I have to bring in the thing itself, <laughs> which is the form. I have to start treating it like it's an actual cube. <clears throat> By the way, welcome. I mean, thank you. <laughs> welcome. Thank you for everyone who um, who gave me birthday wishes. You guys are very sweet on the Google Hangout and on DeviantArt. Thank you, everyone. You're too kind. It's very, very nice of you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm bringing in a little bit here. So this shirt, if it was red, if it was yellow, they would be reflecting each other. So we'd get some purple on this yellow or some pink on this yellow and some yellow on this on this pink from the shirt. So colors reflect each other because the light is constantly reflecting. So light will inherit the color that it's reflecting as well. It doesn't just reflect white all the time. It reflects the color. So I'm placing in some highlights that I will influence later if I do clothes. Alright, so now over here, this piece is illuminated. It will cast a shadow. So that's important. And I'm just casting its shadow just like that, nice and crisp. And I'll probably go over the lines soon and make them into the shadow color that I'm using right now. This, this color. And this is all just basically form studies. That's what it is right now. If you've ever seen me do form studies, I just draw a bunch of cubes and, and it's like different sh shadow scenarios. And that's what form studies offer you. They, they test your mind and always keep you on your feet. So if you don't know how to shade, if like shading is an elusive thing that you can't really get your hands on um, or get your head around, do some form studies. It'll really help you. <clears throat> so same thing over here. Treating it like a like a pyramid, sort of, the hair is like a, a large chunk, not interrupting the main core shadows. So trying to keep that line there, but, but also bringing in some variation. Of course, that line is just really boring. So I'm not breaking the outline of the hair. My brush is still large, and soon you're going to start seeing it really read very, very well. 
So the way I usually teach about hair, let me quickly um, do this. The way I usually teach about hair is you get your dark tone and you have a large brush and you just throw in some strokes. Shrink your brush as you go and then just keep shrinking. Get the highlighter, do the same thing all over again, working with what you've already established through the shadows. Shrink your brush one more time and then bring in that shadow color again and start casting the, the shadow of the hair. And that's sort of how hair, how I usually paint hair like realistically and then you bring in the highlighter tone. The highlighter is always not a straight line, it's a curve and it curves with wherever the hair is curving. That's how I usually do hair and then I'll just keep rendering it, figuring out which shadows I want. But in this case, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with the anime outline. So I have to create this feeling, this realistic hair feeling, but on the in within the outlines of the anime lines. So we're trying to combine the fact that we need a core shadow and we have a curved highlight with the outlines already established. <clears throat> Oops. So hopefully I'll make it to class. <laughs> It'll probably be quick. I'm sure it won't take that long. Once you get your core shadows down, everything else is sort of photoshopping. This is the real rendering that's happening right now. Right, so that's casting a bit of a shadow on that. That's carrying up there. I think at this point, I'm just going to break this piece. This piece is very large, so you might want to break it. And now you see my brush is starting to shrink, and that's healthy. That's a healthy brush shrinking. Please don't shrink your brushes too soon. If you think you're going to paint hair with one tiny brush and just do these tiny little lines until you get a hair feeling, you will just create something that is not hair. You will not create hair. It will just, it just won't work. You have to work large to small because hair has to be treated large to small in a painting. It's just too big, a, it's just too big a system for you to think you can duplicate it by doing what nature does, which is bring in a bunch of tiny hairs. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Right, so now I'm going to go into the lines. And I'm going to change those hair hair lines into into the color I'm using. So I'm going to go to color replacement tool, put it on oopsie, pencil. Color replacement tool, put it on luminosity. Choose that color, that dark tone color, and I'm just going to brush it over. So you have to do luminosity first, meaning you have to do the value of the color you're using. You have to replace the value before you replace the color. Color replacement tool will not work if you only have it on color. You have to have it on luminosity. And then after that I switch to color. I don't usually use saturation or hue. Just color and luminosity. It doesn't matter which one you do first, really. It's replacing it. Um, it's replacing each sort of, I don't know what it is really, data or whatever. And now that color is changing. Great, great tool on Photoshop. My favorite, one of my favorite tools. See those lines are disappearing. And if I need them back, I can always darken them. And I've shown you how to get rid of lines. So now we have this setup that the lines helped us create, but we're not depending on the lines anymore. And that's, that's, that's important. Oops, wrong layer. So I'm going to darken some of these lines again with the burn tool on mid-tones. I'm going to darken the ones here because I still need them a little. Um, but other than that, down they go. It's okay if the clothing has been um, merged as well, I don't mind. 
I'm going to take the skin tones and carry them up so that when I when I shade I don't have to worry about anything leaking through. It's just like this. I'm just trying to carry the colors up. Probably work from the layer underneath. So I accidentally did delete some of these when I selected the hair. That's fine because the hair covers it anyway. <clears throat> Duplicate that. Okay. Turn on this hair. Now I'm going to bring in some of those outlines on the outside and I'm just going to shade around. So we are not going to break what those lines created for us, but we do have to give them a realistic texture just a bit. So we have to create like a feathered, a feathered end to the hair. It has to be like a nice crisp piece of hair. And I'm just going to use my soft brush now. This brush has pretty much served its purpose. Sorry if you hear the beeping of the washing machine. Okay, so you see my my brush is small still. It's 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 shrinking gradually. And that shrinking is what's going to give us that, extend the texture of that hair. So you don't have to go small right away. That's sort of like a crutch. It's kind of like a, a quick fix for your painting anxiety. You feel like, yeah, I'm going to go really, really small and super dark because that's going to make me feel good and, <laughs> and feel safe. It's not. It's not going to help you. Keep your brush large. I don't want these pieces here to have no info on them. I don't want it to be just a solid color, but I still don't want to interrupt the core shadow. So anything in the shadows is going to have like only a couple shades lighter than the shadow. I still want to keep that core shadow. And if I lose it, enlarge my brush, brush it on again until I'm satisfied. Same over here. See, it doesn't matter which brush you have as long as the size is right. I'm going to zoom out. Sorry. I'm going to try to make it feel like the hair is clustered together or separated at times. And I might bring in a second shadow set. Not sure. Depends on how I, what I might need. I'm just, at this point, it's all muscle memory, really. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to go with, um, with all of this. Some cast shadows get faded, so it doesn't have to be the exact color of the, sha of the shadow. Some cast shadows are just faded off. So the cast shadow of this tiny piece sticking out. See, I didn't paint away this tiny piece or bring in extra tiny pieces till it made sense realistically. I didn't have to do that. Same with over here. You don't have to get it completely into the shadow. It can have some light to it and that'll give it that intrigue. Same over here. Okay, so since we did go full black on the eyes, we do have to bring in a darker tone. So again, 
saturate and cool down. So that purple is going to be brought in. Here comes the cavalry. Delicious. Delicious. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to get that color again, and where is my core shadow? Just across here, and that's where I'm going to brush it. Decrease your saturation, I mean your opacity. And just go as dark as you need to, only in the areas that need it. So don't go dark everywhere, don't just bring that color in all the places, just in the places where you feel like it needs to be a little darker. I'm going to carry this shade up here a little. And then I'm going to bring in that highlighter tone I chose and in a circle brush it around the hair just like this. It's okay if you brush over what you did because we're just going to accent it even more. And then this, the, the, ball, the, the ball of her head needs to be shaded as if it was a ball as well so you can't ignore that. It has to be shaded as if it was a sphere. So if you've ever done those sphere studies or those little ball studies, um, so that, that's where this comes in. That comes in here. So same thing where these shades go in the cell shading, it's just that now we're going to treat them with a little bit of uh, respect. <laughs> and we're going to um, bring in those shades. Same thing over here. I'm going to bring in those highlighter tones over everything. Oopsie, bad idea. to darken the inner areas first. So the area that is the most blanketed, oh dang, that, that got on her face, I look like a zombie. I'll erase it. So the areas that are most blanketed on the face, those are the areas that are um, near the face, those are the areas that are the darkest. So the inner hairs are the darkest. Let me erase this mess. That's the thing with working with lines. You're going to be cleaning up the entire time. Just like this. Oops. Actually, I need that. I'm going to continue what I was doing. Just bringing in that shadow color only where I need it and along a line. So I don't want to interrupt any lines. I can want to keep reinforcing the sphere of the head. These pieces here need some as well. This piece is catching a lot of light, so it needs some illumination on it. So doing still lifes and studies on forms, you know, that's what still life is, just a form study, um, will really help when it comes down to knowing where to shade. That's, that's, that is the question when it comes to our, where do I shade, what do I do, where do I put this color? That's what that's that's the answer to that question. Let's do some form studies and you'll figure it out. So I don't want her hair because I'm bringing in that realistic touch. I don't want her hair to seem like she used a lot of gel to keep it stuck together like that. One of those horrible, horrible cosplay wigs. <laughs> oh my god. Never please, please never do those. <laughs> Same thing over here. I'm just gonna break it up. Pick up that piece into maybe two pieces stuck together or three. Sometimes they don't need to do much for it to read. Some cast shadows. Just like this, you have to make sure you're following the cast shadows. Nothing is happening to that beautiful line we made. My brush is shrinking, but again, it's the right amount of shrinking. It's not excessive. 
just at the times where we need it. All right, so over here, I'm going to start breaking up this piece. This piece can't just stay one solid piece. It has to be broken up, so I'll choose the color surrounding it and start breaking up that piece. And one really good way, sorry about Skype, one really good way um, to uh, sort of blend it together and not have to do much work is to get a soft brush on smudge, smudge tool. And what I'm going to do is just what I was doing before. bringing in that hair texture and brushing down along that highlight I made. And you can see, that's, you can depend on this brush though because it does have a look to it that is really detectable. Just got to find that sort of good spot. Sorry about the truck. <laughs> dang neighbor with this dang American truck. Hope he doesn't follow my videos and he'll know. <clears throat> So this is just so that I can mix these two shades together. This is not a replacement for rendering. The smudge tool does not render for you. You still have to go around and fix up what you made. So now I'm on the brush tool. Let me zoom out. Again, darkening as I need to. And then I'm going to bring in highlight near the edges of those dark spots that I made. So that's the secondary light source that we used onto the face. So there's that tiny clash. And it's back. I'm going to have to clean this little piece up. <clears throat> okay. So those smudge pieces that I made were all a bit too large, so I'm going to sort of break them up into larger pieces. So that's what you're always trying to do, make larger pieces or smaller pieces, so distribute them evenly until you feel like the combination is nice, until you have like a nice sort of spot. So it's really random with hair. You just got to keep stroking them, those brush strokes, and um, until you find that nice um, sort of balance between large piece and small piece. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I'm just eyeballing it, trying to preserve the small strokes that I made, but also bring in some new ones. Or a little bit larger, break the whole head piece um, apart a little bit. And you can see the way that it falls on the face is a little bit unnatural now. So we're going to have to um, break that up as well. I'm going to bring in that highlight. The highlight again is on a curve. And it follows the same curve all around the hair. Just fixing this spot here. I'm going to preserve that, uh, that shadow I made earlier. bring in that highlight and then I'll clean it up again. Usually for hair, um, if I'm doing it realistically, I'll choose something like this brush. And that also really helps to give me those solid pieces. Just like that. Really, really nice brush. And again, these brushes are available everywhere. I don't even know where I got this one from. It's just a random download. It's just a 
cubic QB type brush. Yeah, I'm liking that. And after in a minute, I'm going to be sharpening these textures till I find that combo. So I do use the to sharpen tool, not the de sharp. I do use the sharpen tool a lot. It's because um, a lot of my brush strokes are gone in the transfer, but I need transfer on, so that's sort of like a thing you have to deal with with Photoshop. Um, you kind of lose a lot when you have transfer on. Transfers are super necessary sometimes. So again, just um, finding that good balance. I'm going to shrink my brush one more time. small enough. <clears throat> it's too bright. And if you ever get lost, like right now I feel a tiny bit, a bit lost, but as soon as I remember the light source, I sort of like, oh, okay, so I want them there. And then I don't feel so lost anymore. Just like that. Yeah, this piece is bothering me. I'm going to have to fix it. I'm just going to get smudge tool um, and pull it down and it'll um, it'll work. And I deselect. Yes, it did. <clears throat> I totally deselected. What the F? Come on, man. Oh fuck! <laughs> My bad. I was using I was using burn tool. Okay, so there's that. There's that, and I'm just using the smudge tool to, to give it that feather. I need to erase some of this mess I have here. Just continuing. Just to close that piece off. So it's a lot less t difficult than the face, absolutely. And you can definitely get a hold over hair a lot quicker than the face. As long as you follow those, those key elements, which is keeping your brush large, thinking about the distribution of larger and smaller pieces, um, consistent texture, and good use of your brush, so good brush economy. And you'll, you'll surely find that, that spot. And it is a gamble with hair, so you're going to have to just sit there and, and test a couple of strokes together before you get that combo that works with you. So there is no one way, one pattern of large and small strokes for large and small pieces. There is no such thing as one specific pattern. It's going to be a rough ride. <laughs> so you're going to have to just test them out, take your time, and it'll fall into place. I might actually break this piece into two. Just a little bit. I don't want to break the largest, the larger feeling of the feet of the that piece of hair. And so we have to make sure the pieces of hair on this side are as, are as detailed as the hair, um, as the face, because they're right on top of the face. So that's going to be tricky trying to make sure that they match. So I'm sharpening right now the areas that have highlights on them, because areas that have light on them have higher contrast, and Sharpen Tool brings in some contrast. So sharpen tool is good like that, but use it well. Don't don't overuse it. Don't overuse anything. If you find yourself on one tool for like five minutes, at that point you're really overusing it. It should be a quick thing, a quick little shortcut that you use to get around a, a Photoshop difficulty or the fact that there is a lot of space between you and your and your canvas. So um, don't forget the sharpen tool. 
that it's all about your brush. Your brush should be able to do more for you because that, that's how you're applying the color that creates the form. So feather out. We can't draw tiny hairs because that'll be too realistic. Again, this is a combination, a hybrid. But you do want to create a nice soft edge. So over here the edge is softening because I'm using the brush on it. It's like a combination of the eraser and the brush. And for these little gathered up pieces in the back, I'm just going to place some quick strokes for them. Nothing extensive. Just something that responds to a light source. And then I'm going to erase away. Sometimes it's better to have the same eraser as you do the brush because you'll keep that texture. Sometimes the, the solid brush, the hard brush, will erase, erase away any texture that you have on the edge. And some brushes have really nice edge texture. So you might want to just make the same brush on your on your eraser as you as you do on your paintbrush. It's a nice tip I got. Where he is. So I'm trying to figure out the layering of the hair. So this piece is probably in front of these. And so I'm just gonna place in a stroke here. To represent that and then a cast shadow over these gathered up pieces that I did. <clears throat> and then carry that down into the rest of the hair. And then these pieces were behind. The same thing. Okay, so over here I lost a bit of information. That's fine. I'm just going to get my brush again. I think it was this one. Yeah. And then carry on with that bang. Actually, because it's like this, we have one long piece. I need to re look at the lines again. But so this piece is falling straight down, just like that. So I use the shift tool. It's okay if we lost our core shadow, we will get it back. Deselect, and I'm going to just brush some more of that hair that falls straight down because it's gravity is pulling on this piece of hair so it's going to have a straight movement down. And so under all of these shadows, under all of this hair is a cast shadow on the face, yeah? So that means that we have to get the color of the hair and put it in the shadow as well. Like when you have a balloon against a wall, you're going to see some of the color of the balloon in the shadow of the balloon because the hair has to, the the the, the, the light has to travel through the balloon and onto the wall and get its color with it. So that means that we have to do that as well. What is happening? So this piece here, bring in some info. When I say info, I just mean like, you know, detail. Gotta, gotta wrap this up quick before the class starts. Have an hour. Get my soft brush actually. Sometimes a brush just will get in your way. It'll just, it won't do the job for smaller pieces. It'll do a really good job for larger strokes, but sometimes it just won't, it won't do much for you. Simple, basic, soft brush will go a long way as well. Okay. 
And just like that, my brush is shrinking, bringing in some detail. Especially over here, be careful where you place these small, tiny, tiny strokes. They will, they can ruin everything. They demand a lot of attention because they're very, very small. So you have to place them on strategically near the eyes, near areas of. Sorry, this is laundry. Um, near areas of detail that are already there. So we've got details here. Under this eye, and details near this piece as well. And so that's working nicely. We're going to bring in some detail just along this, but please don't interrupt your core shadow. I do want to finish this with you guys, so I'm going to just get my well, look at this one. Same same kind of brush, but it, um, it's a little softer. I'm going to start interrupting some of these because this is too solid compared to that. It doesn't feel real, right? So we're going to have to uh, bring in some real. Real characteristics. <laughs> Sometimes my sentence fades into my thoughts and I don't finish it. It's going to be tricky because it's already so divided. I think that works. So yeah, it's a gamble. Just keep at it. So I'm just treating it like I treat those um, tiny little hair renders that I do. I'm going to throw a core shadow over it soon. So just like this, I'm going to actually, I'll just use my smudge tool. That'll help extend. Extend that. It's okay if it's messy. It's okay. Whoops. That was wrong. Um, I'm going to get myself a brush and get those core shadows back. Just like that. For here as well. Might have to lasso out this this hair piece because it's getting neglected. Yeah, it needs to be lassoed out. And on this part, I'm just gonna stroke in the highlight. The highlight is gonna be on a curve. And the bad thing is that this highlight is going to be interrupting the shadows, so I can replace it with a dodge tool. But you see the dodge tool saturates as it highlights, so you might want to put it on mid-tones and on protect tones so that you don't get that. So it's almost the same exact pink that we got for the highlight, which is pretty much what dodge tool does. Just It just curves like, that, like I do on the color wheel, or the color picker, sorry. I'm just trying to get a nice, even curve that's symmetrical, just like that. And then now we have the right tone and the dark spots, and then we can start detailing along them. So we can bring in detail. And if you do escape from the core shadow, again, just bring in the soft brush and re-establish that. This hair piece here doesn't really have a natural curve near the edge, so I'm just going to give it a sl more slender curve. It's kind of drawn in too bulky, so just like that. Have a nice little tapered finish. And this piece here, this whole hair section is a bit too bulky, considering the fact that it's the hair near the base. So hair 
I mean, hair near the bottom of the, um, of the, sorry, <laughs> of the, of the hair. So it's the hair that's on the bottom, so it's a bit bulky for it. The hair tends to sort of thin out. So I'm just using my lasso tool to clean that up. Still too bulky. I might just leave it alone. I'm gonna soften the edges at least. Okay. And this little piece will have some highlight. Use the smudge tool again. Clean that up. And then again bring in the coarse shadow and then finally you can bring in the highlight. Again the highlight cannot be that, that light. It has to be a little bit more friendly. whole section is kind of just ticking me off. I want like a nice smooth um, piece. So I might just get my basic brush, the hard round, and just use its curve to sort of that off. Nah, it's not. I can't enlarge it. Just give me a minute. <laughs> I'll figure this out. So the hair is falling this way. I know what to do. Extend that piece, make it nice and symmetrical. It's okay if the clothing got re um, removed, I can always bring it back. Clean this piece up. So right now I'm cleaning. Pretty much everything is almost done. So as you see, the hair is, is, is it's got a very specific process, but after you get that down, you can pretty much do it you know, any time you want. What does that even mean? It's right. You can pretty much, like, you know, use it forever. <laughs> it'll, it'll really help you. Uh, screwed that up. Right. Yeah, this piece isn't smooth enough. I have to sort of make it smoother. Smudge tool, I need your help. This piece I've got to lasso out because it's it's shared the same layer. So I've got to sort of separate it. Oops, from the pack and shade it differently. Just 
like that. It's okay if it's it's got that seam around it from the lasso tool. I can just fix it up later. Also, like control, because you can see I, I use control C a lot because I have to get that perfect curve that matches the curve properly, so it's a matter of aim as well. Lots and lots of stuff you have to know how to do when you want to draw, and that's what makes it kind of hard. But after you get that, um, you're good. Okay, so one last thing I'm going to show you guys. I think I'm just going to have to call it a day with, with this piece right here. It's kind of giving me some trouble. I'm not even sure why. Um, um, so one last thing is that between saturation lines, so I'm going to throw that little dark spot up here as well because that happens between highlights, and then there's another little highlight up there. Between saturation lines, um, <laughs> between highlight and shadow, there's a saturation line. That saturation line is very, very specific. You have to make sure you have it. So what you want to do is you want to go on a color layer, go to your pink, get the most saturated pink you can find, use soft brush on like 50% opacity. I'm using 38. And between the shadows and the highlights, you place in that saturation line. Look at that baby. Um, I actually want to go a little bit cooler. That's a bit too warm for me. All right. So I'm just going to place that in between all of the shadows. Not everywhere. Just in between that line. And see that? That's delicious. Same thing over here. And that happens in hair. If you look at hair, um, you do some hair studies, that happens in real life. So you have to make sure you have that. We don't want to trail the eyes away from the away from the, the eyes of the image. We want to make sure that we are working with a focal point in mind. So I'm gonna to go to burn tool on shadows, low opacity, low exposure. I'm gonna to try to frame the face. Nope mid-tones, not shadows. Protect tones on and shadows, maybe? No. Nope. On mid-tones. And I'm going to try to frame the face a little bit so that we keep going back to that. To darken the pieces that are around the eyes. So one last darken with the burn tool. See those nice saturation lines are really, really effective. Okay, sorry, just testing something out. <clears throat> Darkening there. And now I'm going to lasso out. So I'm going to lasso um, and then select inverse. And over top these shadows on the face, I'm going to get the color color layer again, get that base tone pink, low opacity, and then brush some of that pink over the shadows and very, very gently just bring in that, that color because that pink is reflecting on the face. So we want to show that we, number one, understand that and that we are merging these cuts. So this is too much. I'll be erasing away what I don't need. So we are reflecting the color that is on the shadow. So now I'm going to erase away what I don't want until I find a good spot. 
going to desaturate some of the areas on the fa on the hair. So the shadows do tend to be a bit desaturated. So areas near the core shadow shouldn't have that much saturation. That's too much. Just like that. I want, don't want the eyes to trail away. I would have drawn this piece differently. I'm not really the one who drew this. I would have drawn it a little bit differently. <clears throat> you know, this piece here that's hanging off, it seems a bit bulky for me. Bringing in that detail, these hair pieces. You see, bringing in that shadow onto the face, the pink shadow, um, really made the face blend in, so it no longer looks like it doesn't belong. It really feels like it belongs on the face, like the hair belongs to the face. So just like I did with these little pieces, whoopsie, just like I did with this little piece, I'm going to try to taper off this thing into a, into a nice little curve, just like that. Same with this piece as well. they have a nice curve to them. Softening up and cleaning. Almost finished. I will use the unsharp mask on it, the filter. It also helps bring out some of the detail lost because of transfer. Whenever I have transfer off, I don't ever use have to use sharpen tool or or, or unsharp mask because um, the sharpen the, the sharpness of the tool is preserved. But when I do keep that transfer on, which I do have to all the time because it's a really good brush setting, I have to sharpen up. So I'm going to get the sponge tool on saturate. That also saturates. And I'm just going to saturate those lines again. Just like that. Not too bright. Don't want to take attention away from the face. And there were some pieces behind the head of hair. Just like that. And those de don't need to be detailed, they just need to be blurred a little bit. Because we're pretty much um, done with the detail. Go over here and clean this up. So again, sorry if this video turned out to be long. It's already an hour and 15 minutes. But I feel like it, it does help when I'm there, sort of talking about every choice I make. Because I remember back when I was learning, and I'm still learning, but um, back when I was just still learning the basics, I, I would just I wouldn't be able for the life of me to decipher what was happening in the time lapse. And I wish I would wish that there was some sort of list or some sort of explanation happening of what was you know what the artist was doing. So since I was there at that at one point, I don't want to do that to anyone. <laughs> so I'm just going to explain what I do until further notice.
I'm just cleaning up here. It doesn't have to be too clean with the hair edge. So remember, just get your core shadows down. Treat the hair as a 3D object. Bring in something, some, some shadows that respond to a highlight, some uh, cast shadows, all of that that respond to a highlight and then cast some shadows, really important to cast shadows and then after that start bringing in a smaller brush start detailing And then it's just all a matter of balancing, making sure you're not painting away your core shadow. Keep yourself in check. Um, that's it. Eventually you'll just get that pattern that you like, that nice combo between large and small, and it'll work for you. So I'm going to clean up the hair one last time, balancing out the basics. I'll put it on multiply actually. I do not like this piece of hair here. I just, it's not working for me. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to add another piece over here. And I'm going to get the smudge tool on that hard brush and just smudge up. Smudge that away. And just soften that, I guess, for now. And this piece I will shade. Because that, that little bit needed a little bit more info to sort of work for me. Turn multiply off. Kind of wasn't reading enough. doesn't have to be shaded excessively, it's just a small addition. Some more endless cleanup. Almost finished, promise. <laughs> Kind of changed it from where it was originally, a little bit, but I, I still think it feels right. I don't want to detail areas that might attract attention away from, from the eyes, so I'm going to place in some really delicate detail over here. Nothing too invasive. that working? Sorry, I'm a bit of a, of a perfectionist, as I always say. It just has to read well for me. If it doesn't read well for me, it won't read well for my audience, so. And I'm my worst critic. So I have to make sure it's perfect. <clears throat> well, perfect in my eyes, anyway. This bit over here could use some attention. Again, just minor details will go a long way. Nothing too extreme. Whoa! Okay. Deselect and some more cleaning. Sorry if I alarmed you. <laughs> just now. Um. A little bit more over here. 
Let's soften this up. I'm going to bring in that secondary light source with that final touch. Bring it in a new layer and then erase away what I don't need. Just like that. <clears throat> and then I'll bring in my unsharp mask. So just like that, we have a nice little touch of another light source. I'll do a soft brush instead. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of this, merge that down, merge that down. One last thing that you could do to unify the palette a little bit is go on a color mode layer, get the pink of the hair and place it over the lips. That'll, that'll sort of unify the pinks available to us. Um, let me erase some of that pink on the face. That's a bit much because I'm going to bring in some blush anyway. So, so yeah, get some of that pink in the hair and place it over the face a little, and then some pink over the eyes, and then finally. I forget. Just a little bit of that pink over the eyes. The same kind of pink in the face and the hair. I'm going to brush some of the pink over the face entirely. Just some. Really, really low opacity. It's just a little thing that I do. Just to make sure, look, the hair was blue, I do also bring in a little layer of blue. Because that's what happens with our eyes. Our eyes kind of merge stuff together, so it's a very, very small change. It's not that big. I want to take away from the eyes, of course. <clears throat> it's a very, very small change. And then we've got the hair layer. I'm going to get that yellow on the face. Go to a soft, light color mode layer. And place that yellow over the hair. Do you see what that did? A beautiful little thing that happens in real life. It's just beautiful. So we want to unify our colors together. And the way we do that is with our light source. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create the feeling of a of a unified room. that up just a touch. Maybe I'll do it after. <clears throat> okay, I think that's it. Just a bit too much pink over there. I'm going to bring in some more blue for the eyes because I want to keep all saturation levels the same. this face, this, the, the hair is that saturated. I want the eyes to be that saturated as well. But only saturated in areas that the light touches. So you don't just throw that blue everywhere. Just in those specific areas. And some a touch of blue on the whites of the eyes. Yep. That's that. And then finally I am going to so this is bef this is before the the yellow. This is after. It's a really really good trick. Use it if you can. And this is the pink of the lips. Push that down there. And then filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And then I'm just gonna throw that over the the hair this way. And then clean up whatever mess it made. 
and that's it for hair. I hope that helps you. If you guys have any questions on the process, um, I pretty much shared everything about it, but if you guys have any questions on the process, do ask me. I'll try my best to answer the full extent of my knowledge. I don't think I can do this. Uh, trying to get only the lines for the for the body. Some are some are, are sort of haven't been respected that much by me. But it's okay, they'll be replaced by um form later on. Just cleaning these up so that you can have a proper before and after. So that's pretty much the gist of it with hair. Um, you can really build your own style and how you do hair. It's uh, it can be really unique to you, or you can find an artist and try to sort of duplicate what they do as well. And after that, like I said before, once you get the basics of it all down, it becomes very, very easy to keep that process consistent in your work. And that's how you'll get that, you know, signature hair look in all your characters. So if you remember your process and build a specific sort of like list or plan that you'll follow. You know me, I'm, about, I'm all about those lists. I'm a bala bala. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll show you sort of how to do the necklace. So I won't erase that. Now to sort of reflect some light on the necklace. Okay, so almost done. I'm just going to desaturate the hair just a little bit. Oops. Because I um, just want to make sure nothing is too saturated. Maybe lighten it up a little bit. Sometimes it's also really cool if you have a, a background that's gray or a background that certain, has a certain color to it. Sometimes decreasing the opacity of that layer also helps blend that color with the background. So you can see it kind of blends in really nicely when I just bring, in, bring down the opacity. So that's also a cool trick. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please comment below. This uh, video was uh, made because of a suggestion, so I do listen to you guys. Um, don't forget cr Tuesday Critique Hours uh, and Thursday Critique Hours at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I'd love to see some new faces there, and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.